Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Modern Masters 2017 and give you a recap as well as some wisdom when you go ahead and pre-order if you want Iconic Masters sometime in November. What Wizards of the Coast has done is extremely smart. They have taken over the secondary market and they own the secondary market now. One of the interesting points of Modern Masters, the original Modern Masters, was a vendor, a single point vendor, in collusion with maybe some other vendors, can push up a card, a reprint. So Tamagoy was reprinted. The vendors in Las Vegas offered a very handsome sum for all the Tamagoyfs, and they collected them all, and then they raised the price. Artificial price spikes. Uh, that's exactly what it was. And that has been a story and it has been what people have said about reprints and why they do not work. They refer to that Tamagoyf story, which is the story of one card. Tamagoyf is now well below $90 retail and they printed a ton of boxes of this product. How do I know they printed a ton of boxes? We can take a look at the price structure and what's interesting is the price structure now resembles a regular box. So a regular box, a store buys it for $76 or $78, and then they can normally sell it for $90 to $100. The MSRP of a box is probably $4 times $36. Uh, that is what they suggest you should, uh, and that's what a Walmart would sell it at, so $144. So you buy it in, a store buys it in for $78, let's say $76, they sell it for 90, and then they, you know, MSRP is at 144. So there's a big difference between MSRP and what they can sell it at. For a very long time, Modern Masters did not have that difference, especially Modern Masters 1, where it was $7 a pack, it was $6.99 a pack, times 24. So it was $168 a box, plus the fact that these boxes are going for $300. So it was almost double MSRP. Then Modern Master 2015, it got a little less, but you still had the initial hype. Today we are looking at boxes still under 180. Uh, Mass Drop has 181 shipped to you. Your local game store should be able to match. If your local game store is willing to match uh, price, then you can get a very good uh, deal on it. So your listed median is 220, but your market price is actually 190, and you have multiple eBay listings around 180. So 180 is the price that I suggest if you wanted a box today, that's what you can get a box at with shipping. Now, when we talk about that, that's about 170. 170 for the store. The store buys it at 140. They can sell it at 170. M MSRP is what is it, like $240. So $240 compared to the $180 or 170 the store gets, that's a very small margin compared to what it used to be, especially in Modern Masters 1. That means the store is making less margins, that means the investor is making much, much less margins, and that means overall, the person who's getting the most money, because they're producing more boxes, is Wizards of the Coast. And this has been true for the secondary market. The Wizards of the Coast cannot just print out lilies, or I mean, they can be promo lilies, but they're not gonna individually sell single cards, but they can use single cards to sell product. And that is exactly what they are doing. So why should we have a discussion about this? It's important for future buying behaviors. Modern is a format where people are told over and over again, do not buy packs, do not open packs, do not open boosters, buy singles. How many times have you heard that in modern? Standard, I think there's more of a casual crowd who are, are more willing, like last night, um, no, two weeks ago, we we had, was it last night? When Amaket released, we had people come into the store, into my friend's store, and they would open a box, try to, plus and then sell back the box to buy another box and then keep the commons and uncommons 
selling the more, more valuable cards. One of the pers- people pulled a Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, and then he pulled something else that was really f- expensive in foil. So he kind of got there, but he had to pay like $10 extra to get another box. So when you have casual players, they are more likely to buy cheaper boxes, which is standard boxes, and they're more likely to buy pre-constructed product. They are not your audience of casual players are not going to be the ones opening Modern Masters 2017 boxes. Now your audience of modern players who are priced or who care about price, again, are not the people opening these boxes because they have been told time and time again to buy singles. MTG Finance won't even open a pack because they've been told they would tell people time and time again to buy singles. And if you only care about money, that's the way to go. You would never open one of these boxes if you only cared about what was inside them. But if you have enjoyment or you draft these. Now, the other part about this is this format is not typically draftable because the cost of entry is much, much higher. It's essentially two drafts if not more. So instead of doing two drafts of a standard set, which is more exciting, Amaket has just been released, then you just do one draft and you get half the entertainment value, right? If you calculate entertainment value by time spent. So the people who are drafting are not that interested in the set because of the price point. The people who play modern are not interested in the set because of the loss of expected value when they open the box. As soon as you open the seal in the box, you've lost value. And the casual crowd is not interested in it because of the price point. The people who are interested in just randomly opening product plus the fact that it's not available in Walmart or Target. So who who is actually opening this product? That is the question you have to ask. The pre- previously in Modern Masters 1, the expected value was above. If you got a pack for $6.99, you could open a pack and reasonably expect to find a card over $7. You can buy a, a box at $169 and you can reasonably expect to get $200 from the opening of the box. That was Modern Masters 1. Modern Masters 2, I mean 2015 was less so because the cards in it, I believe, were not that great. Uh, they didn't pick a great selection. They were not as good as this particular batch of cards. Uh, this particular batch is e- extremely strong. So You have a product that people are not opening that has a much larger supply than initially expected or predicted and there's nothing wrong with this product. This product has the best reprints I've ever seen in a single product. I've never seen a set where you have enemy fetch lands, Lily, Snap, Blood Moon, Goyf. I, what else do you want? Well, I mean, what else is there in this that wasn't reprinted in this set? So what is the problem and why won't this box go up in price? It's a risk assessment. If you believe Wizard of the Coast will print a second run or Iconic Masters would duplicate what this is, then you wouldn't touch this box at all. You would not buy this box. You would not hold the box. You would not keep product unsealed at your home for this particular Modern Masters, uh, even no matter how good the cards are inside. And this will lead to what future behavior will be. It's called a loss of confidence. Uh, the customer has lost confidence in the product being able to hold its MSRP. And you might say, oh, well, regular booster boxes don't hold MSRP. That's correct, but they have a price point. A regular booster box in standard can get to 80 to $90, and that price point has been pushed down uh, almost to the point that people are selling boxes for what they bought at distribution level. That can't be a good sign of the health of the local game store. So I would always suggest, even if you have to pay a little extra to support your local game store, I know these online prices are significantly lower. Uh, My local game store, one of them in Humble, sells boxes for $240. They sell it for MSRP. And they are well aware you can get a box for $180 online easily, or definitely under $200 online. But they do a good job promoting that, you know, their community, their environment, etc. 
what you can learn from this is from here on out, there's going to be very few products that will hit over MSRP. Maybe from the vault, maybe a promotional product of some type, but very few mass released box products that will be over MSRP. Hence, you should never buy a product over MSRP now because that's not how magic is sold. Magic boxes have never gone for over, over MSRP until they rotated out many, many years after. But during the pre-order, Modern Masters was the one exception where it, you know, especially Modern Masters 1, I mean, you pay $160 a box and then that box can, you can sell it down the road within a week or two for 300 that was a big boon for the store. Where did that, all that money go to? It went to the stores. So when you take away a product, a specialty product, I mean, the stores still make, if you're selling for 180, you sell for 170 and you buy for 140, you still make $30 a box. But that's a lot of cash flow that you're investing in this product. It's $140 of cash flow. And you don't want to sit on these too much because if they're not selling and people don't want to draft it, if people don't want to open individual packs, then you, you will lose out on other opportunities. It is a cost of opportunity that you have. My gut feeling about Modern Masters and the continuing of Iconic Masters, Eternal Masters, etc. is it's already inundated. There's a lot of supply out there. And it will go the same way as a regular box, where a regular box is $78, store sells it for $90 with the promo. The MSRP is $144. There's a difference of $54 from the what a store can actually sell it from, sell it to a customer, and the suggested retail price. Now, in Modern Masters case, I feel like the price structure would be the same, exactly the same. It will be uh, $140, the store buys it for $140 at the distribution level, they can sell it for $170, $180, making their $30 a box, which is equivalent to, if you divide by two for the cost, equivalent to what they would be making if they bought two boxes of a standard set. And then the MSRP is still $240, so you do have a huge $60 gap. So the ratios are very similar, and that is not by mistake, right? That's not by mistake. That's Wizards of the Coast figuring out the exact balance. They figured it out. They wanted the balance of a modern masters. They wanted it to be, A, be more expensive, but they wanted it to have the same ratio as a regular box, from the MSRP to the actual sale, from the actual sale to distribution level. There's no longer free money for these stores to make where they can get a box for 100 and then they can sell it for 300 although the MSRP is 170 That's no longer the case as it was with Modern Masters 1. And that's what Wizards of the Coast wants to do. It has price structured beautifully. It was a very smart plan and something that when you think about it, Wizards of the Coast is not dumb. And if anyone thinks that they don't know economics, you can look at this model and see what they did in just a, a year they figured out the exact number of, of cases that have to, or boxes, packs that have to be in the market for them to hit their regular MSRP ratio of a normal standard box. Because that's where they make their bread and butter, right? And that pushes the price down on the secondary market quite a bit. You know, there's no argument that the fetch lines have gone down. The Goyf is over under $90. It's the first time it's ever been under $100 since... You know, it's gone up since it spiked and people realized it was a great card. And you look at Lily, you look at Snap, these card, these prices will be depressed for some time just because of the number of boxes out there. It's very similar to RTR. The RTR prices have, I mean, they have gone up a tiny bit, but it's really a problem where you can just open a box for $80, get a few shock lands, get a rest in peace. Uh, there's not that many expensive mythics that you have to look for. They're all in the rares. So it's not unlikely you can get them. They did something smart. This was very, very smart of them to get the correct math. And this is, I believe, the correct math to suppress the secondary MTG finance market, which I applaud them because it's about time. Anyway, bye guys.